to my kitchen. Now if you're looking for a really fun effect to add onto your cakes, in this week's video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make these chocolate balls that resemble balloons. We've got plain coloured ones, we've got shimmery gold ones and we've also got these polka dot ones. Now don't forget if you want to see more videos like this you can subscribe to the Cakes Balance YouTube channel. You can also hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button and this will just alert you every time I upload a new video. Okay, let's get started. So the main tools that I'm going to need is first of all I've got my silicone moulds. Now these were bought as a set of three and all the tools that I use in today's video I will put a link to in the description below. So each of the mould just has these semi-spheres. Now my largest one measures seven centimetres across. The next size down is 3.8 centimetres and my smallest one is three centimetres. Now my tools are going to be going on on a six inch sponge cake and this one measures around five inches in height. Now for the balls you can either use chocolate or candy melts. If you are using chocolate you want to make sure that the chocolate has been tempered whereas candy melts you can just use them straight out of the packet. Now I'm going to be using the bright white candy melts and these ones are by Fun Cakes but you can also get bright white ones from Wilton or PME. Now for my colours I'm going to be using oil based colours and these are by Colour Mill. So I've got a rose, a raspberry and a black. I've also got some gold luster dust so that we can colour some in a nice shimmery colour. So I'm going to get started making my first chocolate balls and these are going to be a light pink. Taking some of those white candy melts, I'm going to pop these in the microwave for intervals of around 10 seconds until they've melted into a nice smooth mixture. Now when making the balls you want to start with your biggest mould first and the reason for this is we're going to tip out any excess candy melts that we don't need. We can then remelt the candy melts and use these in the smaller molds so we're not going to end up with a lot of wasted chocolate. Now for the light pink I only want to make one of my larger balls. Now with these silicone molds sometimes when you are pushing them out some of them can get broken so you may want to make an extra one just in case. Now I'm going to pour my candy melts in Filling that about a third of the way. The most important part of these balls is the top edge as this is going to be where they're being stuck together so we want to make sure this is nice and thick. The difference between creating these and casicles or maybe you've seen my geometric hearts is we want quite a thin shell so that they're nice and light so that we're able to stick them to each other but we do want a nice thick top edge so this is the reason that we've added in more of the candy melts or chocolate than we need. Now I like to leave this for around one to two minutes just for those candy melts to cool down slightly so that they're slightly thicker than when we added them in. All this is going to mean is that when we tip the chocolate out it's going to tip out slightly slower and build up a thicker edge. I've then taken a piece of parchment paper, flip this upside down and tip out the excess. Taking a knife or an offset spatula you then want to run it along that top edge. If you do see any areas that the candy melts have missed or you think they're looking a little bit thin you can take some of that on the back of your spoon, pull that onto that edge and again just tip out any excess and as this runs out of the mold thickening up that edge. Now you want to pop these in the fridge until they have completely hardened. With the excess pop this into our glass and use this for the slightly smaller ones. If the mixture has started to thicken up pop this back in the microwave until that re-melts. I can then do exactly the same with my slightly smaller mold. So I'm filling these up just below the top, spreading that up the side Again, leaving those for a few minutes just for those candy melts to cool down. I can then tip out that excess and I'm going to pop this one into the fridge. And finally, the really small ones. Again, reusing and just melting back down any excess. Now, if you are colouring your chocolate or your candy melts, you want to make sure that you're using an oil-based colour. Most gel colours are actually water-based. And when water is mixed with chocolate, the chocolate will seize, meaning that you won't be able to use it in order to create your chocolate balls. So with the excess candy melts, if you are making a darker shade of pink for the next lot of chocolate balls, you could use this 
and add more colour to it. If not, you can allow this to dry on your parchment paper, peel it off and just add it back into the packet that the candy buttons came in and this will be absolutely fine for you to use the next time. So once your moulds have come out of the fridge, carefully going to peel back the silicone. I'm then going to do the same for the slightly smaller ones, just pushing those out. Now in order to stick these together I want to just slightly warm up that outside edge before I attach the two sides. Now I'm going to take my metal scraper. I've got my kitchen blowtorch just running it over the surface just to heat that up. Take my first half and just sit that on top and as you can see it's just melted that chocolate. Join those together now by running your finger around the edge. Now if you do have any tiny gaps you can either make that the bottom so that's where you'll attach it to your cake or you can take a small amount of the melted candy melts on your finger and just use that fill that gap and that's going to give you this really pretty large chocolate ball. And I'm just gonna set that to one side, completely dry. Whilst I do the same with my slightly smaller balls. So here we have a selection of our light pink balls. First of all, we've got the larger one that measures seven centimeters across, the 3.8 centimeter ones and the smaller three centimeter ones. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same process but use the slightly darker raspberry color mill. Give me a deeper pink in order to add with these ones. Okay, so here we have our lighter and our darker pink balls. Now to add to these, I'm gonna make some with some patterns on and also some gold shimmery ones. For my patterned ones, I'm gonna create some polka dot balls. Now you may have seen in my recent cake hearts video that I created this style along with a yet painted rose design and you can use those exact techniques for your cake balls. So I'm going to take a really small amount of those candy melts. Once that's melted down I'm going to add some of the black. Take a small paintbrush and mould. I'm going to create some polka dots. Now, if you haven't already seen that video and you fancy adding some rose designs into your chocolate balls, or you just fancy giving some geometric cake hearts a try, then I will put a link in the description below. You then want to pop this in the fridge for a few minutes for those caddy melts to dry. Okay, so my mold has come out of the fridge and those black dots have completely dried. Now I've melted down some of my white candy melts and you wanna make sure that this has cooled as much as possible before adding them on top of the dots as we don't wanna melt these and ruin the pattern. Now I'm also gonna be making some plain white ones so that I can color these with some gold luster dust. So here we have these shells with these really pretty polka dots on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick all of these together. Now with the white ones, I'm gonna color these in gold to complement that pink. Now as well as these gold balls, I'm also gonna be using these gold choco crunch balls by Happy Sprinkles. Now I've got the extra large and the medium, and this is just gonna give some smaller sizes. Now I'm gonna be using the metallic luster dust by Sweet Sticks, as this is gonna give us quite a good match. Now Happy Sprinkles do these choco balls in so many different colors, so you can match them to the theme of your chocolate ball or your chocolate balloon cake. If you did want to get your hands on some of the Happy Sprinkles, they're also giving you 10% off at the moment with the code HAPPYLINS10 at the checkout of either their website or the cake decorating company. And I will put all the links and the details in the description below. To color these, I'm taking some of that gold luster dust and a big fluffy brush and putting that on the outside. Now you can add the luster dust into the mold before you add in your chocolate or your candy melts. But I have found that when you take the shells out of the mold, the luster dust does become slightly dull. So by doing it this way, it retains that shimmer. And we're left with this really pretty shimmery gold ball. So once they've been colored, here we have our three gold balls all ready to add onto our cake 
with the rest. So we've got our different shades of pink. Some white ones are polka dots and some gold ones. Now I have made a few more than I will probably need, just so I've got a few extra for when I work out where they're gonna go. But to make these ones, it took about 400 grams of candy melts. So the next thing to do is bring back in our cake. Now in order to attach my balls to my cake and to each other, I'm gonna be using some of the leftover white candy melts. Now I'm gonna add on with with a paintbrush. Now you can add the candy melts and just hold the balls where they are until those candy melts or your chocolate has dried. But I'm gonna be using a spray ice to speed up the process. Now when you spray this onto chocolate or candy melts, it makes them set straight away. Now this can I got from the cake decorating company and they do sell different brands so you get them in different sizes. Now I want it to look like a balloon garland or a balloon arch on the top and go from the lightest color round to the darker pink starting with my two larger pink balls now where we've got the seam I'm gonna angle these back slightly so this way from the front you're not going to be able to see them you can then pop that into place and just using my can of spray ice spray that on and fix solid I can now start working with my slightly smaller balls all the way around the side the finished cake with these different sized chocolate balls going all the way over one side resembling a balloon garland. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and will be able to use this technique on your own cakes. If you have enjoyed the video as always don't forget to give it a like and if you'd like to see more videos like this then don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll also put a link in the description below to all the tools that I used throughout today's video. So until next time, bye!